Hey folks, Dave the Not-So-Evil, Evil Viking 13 here, and welcome back to the Confederate Republic, which is my alternate history Let's Play as the Confederate States of America here in Empire Total War. And of course, this is not quite vanilla Total War. This is the Brothers vs. Brothers Civil War mod. It's somewhere in, I think, the fall of 1864. I'm going through here and spending just a bit of money on some economic upgrades because my tax income is down to about 5700 per turn. A lot of these are really expensive. I'll go for some nice farms, uh, palatial estates here in the Carolinas. On the war front, the Union has really solidified their lines around DC. I've got a couple of small stacks, but then almost a complete full stack here, and then quite a few troops in DC proper. And of course, we lost uh, captured DC. I think two episodes ago, General Stonewall Jackson almost held out against the tide of reinforcing Union forces, but he did eventually go down. Ready. I gotta figure out a way to break some of these troops up. If they took out Stonewall Jackson and his armies, sir. even with backup, I don't think Lee should face them head on. So, At the ready. let's send Mosby Immediately. up here to the west. Halt. And I'll leave Stuart here to reinforce the the western flank of Lee's army. Ready and awaiting order. They might go for Stuart, but in that case, I'll just retreat back into the Shenandoah Valley here in Virginia. And up north, I was making a charge right towards West New York. At the ready. But they reinforced before I could get there. Man. So now I have to decide, do I commit the troops in, um, where is this, Ohio, Eastern Ohio, and try and push for that attack, or do I wait for them to spread their troops out? Forward. That's going to leave Ohio kind of undefended. So I'm going to spend the rest of my gold on some extra troops just to fortify it. In a lot of cases here, if any Union armies were to break through my lines, I would be in serious trouble because I've got a nice lockdown country here, but only because they haven't broken through the front and because to the south, Mexico knows better than to declare war. But with how much of a fight the Union is putting up around DC and around New York, I don't think I could fight this war on two fronts right now. That would be stretched way too thin. I can barely afford the war that I'm in, and I own most of the continent. <laughs> Let's see if the Dutch want to trade. They see no benefit. Uh, come on, guys. I don't really have any bribe money here. Let's do 142. Oh, well, I just gave it to them. Oh, well. <laughs> They're weak and destitute here in the Americas, maybe. That will encourage them to trade with us next turn, perhaps? Sir. I'll scoot these armies around just a bit. Let's see if the Union takes the bait and comes west. In either one of these territories, New York or the DC, Maryland area. They did. Okay, General Mosby. 
It's winter time. You can't move very far. Forward. Just yes. keep striking north. Onward. And General Stewart, follow. Your humble servant. General Lee, I want you Sir. staying right there. Make ready. We'll get this militia moved up too. Ooh, we can also recruit new units. New special units. And I think that's because Sir. we did lose uh, General Stonewall's army. And you know what? Let's go ahead and improve the roads and railways in Virginia. That is our capital, after all. Engineers, sharpshooters, howitzer, Napoleon. Let's do a parrot rifle. Ready and awaiting order. And that army could probably use more infantry. So we'll give them a nice set here. Um, not volunteers and not the cavalry. I'll give them, uh, not engineers either, let's just go for some regulars. Okay, we are now in January of 1864, Part B. So it wasn't fall of 1864, it was actually January. And in this month, in the actual war, the Sir William Wallace, a steamer filled with northern goods, falls under attack as it moves down the Mississippi River towards New Orleans. Sir William Wallace and five more steamers operated in Mississippi carrying supplies, uh, wounded soldiers, etc. That's a strange bit of text there. It feels like it's unfinished. Did they make it with their supplies or not? Well, I guess the point of that bit of history is to remind us that in this time period, uh, even the heartland of the Confederacy was not safe at the ready. for Confederate forces and supplies. I'm going to go ahead and join these two armies together, get our best troops in here. Any further orders? There we go. Immediately, your humble servant. By the left, sir. March. By the left, march. Okay. We now outnumber them by a tiny bit, but I don't really trust those odds. They have a lot of elite troops here. Ready and awaiting order. And that makes me nervous. So let's do one more turn and see what. Ready the Yankees order. down here in the DC area do. Well, they reinforced. We do have those new farms here in Virginia. Let's go ahead and upgrade those. That's about all we can spend. Do more palatial estates there in the Carolinas. Um, well, this army is getting bigger. This secondary army supporting Lee's army. I'll add some sharpshooters to the mix. And here in February of 1864, the submarine H.L. Hunley which was a small hand-powered submarine was privately built at Alabama in 1863. It was based on plans furnished by a Confederate naval officer. There are some successful trials and then she's transported to Charleston, South Carolina to serve in the defense of the port, but she's damaged while moored next to a steamer and sinks with the loss of its five-man crew. She is salvaged and repaired again, and sinks again on the 15th of October. And that was during more trials, and again she loses all of her crew, which included Hunley himself, uh, the inventor 
a designer of the submarine that time. Again, she is raised and repaired, this time under orders to remain on the surface, and begins a series of attempts to attack U.S. ships blockading Charleston Harbor. On the 17th of February, those efforts are successful when the submarine detonates a torpedo into the hull of the schooner USS uh, Husatanak. That's a weird name. Sinking the ship. However, the submarine fails to return from the mission and is presumed lost with all hands. And actually, I've gotten to see a replica of that submarine, and it is terrifyingly tiny. It looks like a big torpedo, honestly. Like, it's that small, uh, with just barely enough room for those crew and their cranks to move the thing. And I think one of the leading theories on its loss is that that torpedo explosion where they sank that ship also sank them. What a terrifying job. Huh. Do we want to attack Sir. here in New York? Or keep prepping for an attack here in the south? Your humble servant. Tell you what, guys. We're going to split up armies here. General Stewart is going to head Troops. east. Forward. At the ready. General Mosby is going to head northwest ever so slowly Ooh, that's gonna put four of my armies to the north and only two to protect Virginia Make ready. yeah Stuart you're not going far I'm gonna keep you close Dutch want an alliance, but they want my territory for it. How about a trade agreement? Come on, guys. <laughs> At the ready. Hmm. I'm gonna send these troops Forward. to join the fight Forward. in the east and recruit replacements here in Ohio. And in Virginia, let's do a Hamptons Legion. And an Orphan Brigade, a line infantry. Ready and awaiting order. Your humble servant. Interesting. I've burned this structure down here in Harrisburg, Ready, and they have ready. not rebuilt it. They must be very low on funds. By the left. March. Taking a peek at Philadelphia here, and it is defended pretty well. Ready for order. Let's burn down these iron mines Sir. even more. Prepare for war! Yeah, guys, I'm just not comfortable with having so many of my armies to the north, so... Yes. As soon as these reinforcing troops Ready get here, Sir. we're going to attempt that attack on West New York. Actually, let's go ahead and get one more unit of militia going from Michigan. Oh, wait! You guys can actually build uh, cannons and line infantry, <laughs> all right? Don't mind if I do. And in this month of uh, the second half of February in 1864, the CSS Hunley destroys the USS uh, Usatonic with a torpedo. That's basically the same thing in the last chronicle. Okay. Let's end this turn here. Colonel Custer in Harper's Weekly. In early June of 1863, a young Union cavalry officer named George Custer, George Armstrong Custer, 
showed bravery when confronting a Confederate force near Adelaide or Aldi, Virginia. He wore a wide-brimmed straw hat, and he led a cavalry charge that put him at one point in the midst of the Confederate force. And legend has it that the enemy, the Confederates, upon seeing Custer's hat, took him for one of their own, and in the confusion was able to spur his horse and escape the melee. And he was awarded the rank of Brigadier General for that action. At only 23 years old, he's known for natty uniforms and for having numerous photographic portraits taken of himself. But his flair for showmanship is also matched by brave actions on the battlefield. If you guys have ever read the uh, Alternate History Confederate Victory series by uh, the author whose name has escaped me for the moment. We can't do that. It'll come to me. I'll get back to that. But uh, Custer features prominently in those books. Forward for crown and country. Ah, Harry Turtle Dove. Those are pretty fun Ready reads. Forward. If you guys do enjoy Ready. alternate history. Make ready. It's very strange to read about trench warfare in the Roanoke Valley in Virginia, and. Uh, river monitors ready, fighting on the Ohio. Make ready. Make ready. All right, guys. I think we're set up for a desperate attack here in West New York. Well, maybe not desperate, but um, Sir. yeah, it's a bit of a gamble, that's for sure. Forward. Ready for Forward. Order. Harvesting supplies. Your humble service, sir. By the left. March. Yes. Let me get these armies as close as March. possible. So if I attack from the north at DC, they can all reinforce. For now though, for General Longstreet lead the attack on New York. March. Yeah, this is gonna be a knockdown, drag out fight. Especially seeing most of our infantry are militia and volunteers. Here we go guys, the wolves are howling, and we're preparing for a snowy fight here in New York. Let's see, we've got a town right in front of our lines, and the Union is deploying over here somewhere, there it is, almost in the town, so... All of our cannons are howitzers. We don't have to worry about line of sight. So I'm just gonna put them up front, basically. And we're gonna put some, let's put some line infantry here on the left. Some militia to back them up. Militia. Militia. Oh man. These guys really are almost entirely militia, so I'm gonna stack them kind of deep. And then you guys will push into the town from the right flank, I think. General Longstreet, stay here in the back. More militia on the right. Let's get our Vidyet Cavalry on the far right. I'm gonna put Longstreet way in the back there. Dragoons on the far left. All you guys deployed, deployed, deployed. Well, we guessed well for the artillery, that's for sure. Their howitzers are in protective bunkers here. Oh wow, great hits to start things out here. Tons of Union losses. Wow, maybe even a few hundred between all of their troop formations and cavalry. 
That's a really great start for a first barrage. You guys kind of circle around there. Militia, what can we capture? Let's capture the town hall there. Well, we'll start with the warehouse and that town hall because I do see Yankee reinforcements on the right. Let's send our cavalry after them. And the infantry. You guys should be moving up to this wall. Forward! Forward! March! And you guys take the center streets here too. That's a general's bodyguard. Let's intercept him for the morale bonus of killing a general. And now we're getting some artillery attacks against our forces. There we go. We have intercepted their general. You guys take the wall here. The rest of the infantry, I want you guys kind of spread out in the town. That should give some cover for artillery fire. Forward. We may actually have a superior artillery position with this large hill between our forces. to be kind of panicking. Mm. That, though, is shrapnel shot, and that just killed... What, a third of that regiment right there? Eh. Get behind the wall, guys. Get behind the wall. All howitzers concentrate on their howitzers. Okay, we have some garrison buildings to watch out for reinforcements as they come in for the Union. Now let's just hope that we can do some damage to those cannons with our cannons. Yeah, the 37th Regiment got hit really hard there. Gonna move you guys up on the left here. I'll leave one unit of militia in the trees to cover the cannons. I'm seeing a lot of troops marching here. Let's take as many of these houses as we can and just watch out for that artillery to fire back now we're getting some hits on their cannons slowly but surely wait General Sherman is charging our cavalry <laughs> Brave, but foolish. You guys go ahead and push up in the center here. Ooh, here comes the push. And 
and their cavalry are pushing really hard and my lines were not ready. Custer's cavalry. Well, the frame rate is dropping as the troops charge in from every direction. At least now I can send my Vidyet cavalry around and we can do some damage to their cannons, if nothing else. Their troops are actually retreating and mass here in the center. Their desperate charge appears to have worked against them. My cannons have done too much damage. All right, howitzers, don't shell my own lines here. Reform lines, men, reform lines. I'm really glad that I had these guys behind fences here in the back too. Got some infantry fighting over the houses here. It's messy here, guys, but we're definitely in the lead. Hampton's Legion, go for Custer's Cavalry on the left. Yet cavalry meet their dragoons here at the cannons finish them off and then I think we're gonna reform lines here shortly because their infantry are going to start turning around this cannon fire back here this cannon fire back here this howitzer fire right here There we go. Dragoons are broken. Hampton's Legion. Rush down the hill and hit this regiment of foot. As Custer's cavalry retreats, Hampton's Legion swoops in. Let's pull the left flank back here just a bit. We're getting a little bit overextended. Cavalry, fall back and hit this infantry in the center. I guess that's technically the center still. Oh yeah, and here come the reinforcements. German Rangers, let's get ready for you guys. Confederate militia. March back to here and get ready for the defense. Let's see, you guys too. It's time to start shifting our lines around. Howitzers, get ready to fire. We just lost the flank. I'll leave that howitzer to pound the infantry in the center, but everybody else is going to need to start shifting. General Longstreet, go ahead and move up. Let's get ready to take the high ground here in the city and hold the line.
Yep, the militia is falling back. Howitzer number one, I want you up here. Actually, let's do right here. I guess that's Howitzer number two, technically. Hampton's Legion, go ahead and sweep that Union Irish Brigade out of here. Yeah, they got a volley off. Hard to watch all parts of the battle at once here. Great artillery hits on those Rangers. Perfect. Did yet cavalry doing very well against some infantry back here. They do have more dragoons coming in though. There we go, militias hitting their state militia. Bayonet charge with a rebel yell. Okay, you guys go ahead and fall back. Let's make a cohesive line here. Dragoons. Meet my vidyet cavalry. They are injured, but experienced. Hmm. The Yankees actually broke my charge here on the left. They're routing all of my militia back here. So let's let Hampton's Legion finish the job. Again. That's right. Concerned, exposed flank. It's not good, though, because my howitzer is now almost exposed back here, as is General Longstreet. Ooh. Large unit of Union Cavalry coming off the hill there. Confederate Militia take this house as well, because our Vignette Cavalry just quickly lost the fight against the Dragoons. Interesting. You guys are out of range, but the Vidyet Cavalry is not. This is where we're going to hold and wait for more of our reinforcements to get here. Ooh. Got Union forces trying to flank General Longstreet here. On Hampton's Legion. Route them. Thankfully, I have these troops in the warehouse, too. Cannons fire canister shot over the fence line at these guys. Oh, whoops. I have a howitzer that's exposed back here, I just realized. Come on, canister shot. Do the trick. Uh-oh. Come on, they're wavering. One more hit. One more hit. Militia, get up there. There we go. Cavalry move around the right. Alistair's go ahead and pack things up. Let's get more infantry out here, too, because we're about to lose one of these howitzers. Might already be too late. Let's get round shot, explosive shot falling on the huge cavalry charge happening right there. Oh, man. Come on, hit him, hit him, hit him. Uh, not great hits there. It's 
It's actually two units of 150 cavalry. General Longstreet, fall back here. General Beauregard, you fall back too. Light Horse Artillery, I want you guys pushing up to right here. Hampton's Legion. Strike out against that Union Cavalry in a desperate charge right there. Ooh, that canister shot over my own men and through my own men right there did break that cavalry. Shift fire, shift fire. Howitzer, come on up here. You guys, run. Napoleon Cannon, run. Got to reinforce these lines. Let's make sure that that cavalry is done for, and then Howitzer, go ahead and move back. We have lost the town hall here in the center. Uh, General Longstreet, come on back. Light Horse Artillery, we need you up on this hill immediately, basically. Our lines have been flanked on all sides. To the hill, boys. To the hill. We gotta hold them here in the city if we can. Light Horse. Why are you deploying? No, don't deploy. Hampton's Legion is still alive. Amazing. Okay, how it's her deploy. Fire shells over the hill here. At the Lightning Brigade. And the militia. On reinforcements, get in here. Okay, horse artillery. You're all set finally. To the top of the hill, long street down the hill. Howitzer is deploying. There we go. Our forces in the buildings in the city are delaying them. And they're taking severe losses. Hampton's Legion, fall back, fall back. Don't want to lose you guys. Pennsylvania Bucktails. Let's hit you guys with howitzers. Militia, form up the right flank. Light horse artillery, fire canister shot through the center of our lines at the Union infantry. That unit over here is annoying me. Come on guys, form lines. You guys get up here in the front. There's those howitzer shots going out. And the canister shot. 
firing down into the town. New militia is now here. And regular infantry is now here as well. Who else is here? 12 pounder Napoleon. Alright guys, watch these engineers on the left. Hampton's Legion, I want you coming up here for those guys. Actually, sorry Hampton's Legion, but run. They're flanking us big time right here. There we go. Getting some of them with the shrapnel shot. And they're down. Horse artillery fire on the center once again. Got to create a killing field here at the crossroads. Regulars, hit them hard, hit them hard. Come on, Napoleon Cannon, what is taking so long? Our other howitzer is finally in position. All howitzers pour fire down the right and the center. Right flank push up, center consolidate, consolidate. Nice work, Hampton's Legion. I want that Napoleon cannon right there. I'm looking in the back here, they're still having a hard time getting my militia out of these buildings. Volunteer infantry getting a little bit shaky here. Our guys hold just a bit longer. Let's spread this line out. Make sure that we are completely covered here. Oh, wait, no we can't because of the shrapnel shot from the hill. Sorry, boys. Bayonet charge. Bayonet charge. Hold the line, boys. Hold the line. Hampton's Legion, I want you, starting your march around back behind of their lines, to go after... Ooh, that's a Gatling gun. Okay, let's not charge that. <laughs> you guys are now exhausted. And the charge on the left worked. I can't believe that. So what we're going to do next here, guys, we're going to consolidate our front line. We're going to get all of these fresh new troops up here. And then... All of my howitzers are going to move up, and we're going to pound that Gatling gun. Let's 
he actually within range? He is in range for that front howitzer. General Longstreet, go ahead and march up here to the corner of the town. We're actually going to be able to reinforce and rescue the militia in this warehouse. Uh, I heard that Gatling gun firing at what? I'm not entirely sure. Napoleon cannons. Reply to that Gatling gun if you would. Howitzers, go ahead and move up to right here. The crossroads where the battle was decided. A lot of that fencing now destroyed. There goes one of the Gatling guns. They're taking some howitzer fire now. They're gonna pack back up and fall back it looks like. Guys, I'm gonna take that victory. A heroic victory against all odds. We took a lot of losses. We won a pretty concrete victory right here, guys. We deployed 9,000 troops in total, but didn't even use a whole lot of that second army versus the Union's 6,300. Top kills. Hampton's Legion at 535. Confederate Militia, 308. Our Howitzers at 269 and 259. Vidyet Cavalry at 252. Militia, 246. Howitzer, 226. Some crazy high kill counts here, guys. For war. And New York belongs to the Confederacy. At least, Western New York. Yes. It is going to cost us a lot of money. Uh, another 4,000 or so, I believe, to replenish the forces that we lost. And let's move these new troops from Virginia up to our supporting Ready, army. Ready, wow, what a victory in western New York. Okay folks, we are out of time for today after that massive fight. But in the next episode, I'm going to bet that we're going to have a similar fight here at Washington DC again. Until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you all next time.